The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here. This is Friday, the 15th, mid month. And what we're looking at here is the Dow's down 272 at 43,476. I'm going to start off the way I've been starting off a number of things uh, over the last uh, week. And it's showing, I hope this is the chart. Let's press the button. There we go. Yeah. And what I've been talking about is there was a, a time lapse between the March high of this year using my dark news index where we pull back sharply. And then I chose the uh, July high as the time period for the start of a new move to the upside. But you had, of course, go down and then come back up. But I took it from the high in March, and I took it from the high in July. And that came out to the 11th of November. You can see right there. I've been showing this chart for a while, and I actually had this down here only because... We already were very close when I started talking about it, about in October. And uh, then I moved it up. It had nothing to do with the height. It was ironic that we actually went there. That's got nothing to do with it. All I was doing was taking this particular high made in July and saying, if this is the measurement in time, it's got nothing to do with the horizontal pattern. It's just a time sequence. Then the 11th would be where I'd be looking at uh, some kind of a top. Well, we did make a top. I don't know if this is the top. It's a top for sure because we've pulled back over 1,000 points. Uh, but we did go up almost to 3,000 points. So there's nothing wrong in that per se. But if you look, the nine-period exponential moving average is still very strong. But it was very strong when we made the high. Remember, I like to look at internal highs and residual highs. And I suspect we're not looking at something all that different to what happened in July when there was a, a high, internal high. Remember, I talk about it as if that's the earthquake and then the aftershock can be more intense, less intense, or the same. And... We In this particular instance, when we went down, we only made an internal low. We didn't make a residual low. And that internal low of August, where fortunately we, we did a lot of buying right there, in this, that, that day and the second day, the next day afterwards, um, turned out to be just a single move to a V-shaped pattern to the upside. But then we got an internal high and a residual high back in August. Then we got an internal low and residual low to the low of September. Then we got an internal high and residual high to the high of uh, September. That was September the uh, 27th. And then we got a little mini r right there on this inside track repellent zone. We started to make that a propellant zone. And lo and behold, we got the inside, uh, we got internal low and residual low. Inside track became a propellant, and we went to the October internal high and residual high, and we came down, made an internal low and residual low, where we added some positions, and now we've got the single move to the upside. So that's where we are. And I wanted to go through this whole preamble because it's part of what I look at all the time. Uh, it's very important to me to be able to use anything that we have in our toolbox to be able to say, where are we? My assessment has been that there was an emotional response that was um, that began just before Election Day, the 5th, and then it accelerated from the 6th. So is that an emotional... Now I can go back to the chart itself because this is this, this preamble has given you everything that I'm looking at at this particular point. I have not put in a, a dark news index right here 
at the high. I'll do that this weekend to see whether or not that I missed something there. What I was saying that that single leg up to up, I'm calling F slash A. My preference has been to call it an A as if it's a brand new move and that there would be a pullback and then we would make only nominal highs. In other words, we're making some kind of internal high and then the residual high will be higher going to a series of peaks that are not much higher than the 44,486 high that was made. And, and with that said, and so that the high, and, and the coincidence is that we're looking at from the 11th of November, we're looking at, and let me go through this now one at a time. Let's skip the weekly and monthly charts just for the moment. Look, the MACD is very strong, but you've had this huge arch and it can turn over, and I've seen this before, where it makes, I call it the Grand Prix, the Le Mans. Uh, anyone remember the uh, Le Mans, was it Monaco? One of the, one of those uh, Grand Prix races where you have the hairpin bend, but you had this big turn, and that turned a major turn, and that eventually went down to uh, the lower, lower part of the uh, chart. Now, what's really important is that the stochastic is now under 80%. Remember, it was actually at 90, now it's at 78%. And the on-balance volume is fading. This is the, the Dow. The ratio of strength is still good, but it's starting to decline. So this, to me, is a really important moment because for that nine-period moving average to cross, remember, it's technical Friday, so I'm getting very technical here, for the nine-period moving average to cross under the 14-period moving average, you would have to ask for a lot. You'd have to ask for that price to go right into the gap. In other words, the gap on the 6, the low was 42,850. We're at 43,440. Uh, that's a lot of points. It can happen. I'm just saying at this particular stage, that's what I'm looking for. Then what I did last night for subscribers in my opening call, I went through again the 1929 high, um, how... Um, July of I just I did it very briefly because I've done it so many times. I just wanted to show for new new subscribers the kind of thing that says to me major top. What do I need? I need a confluence of factors going into a particular sector that bull, lifts up the entire market. But there's really one focus, like it was the dot com in. Um, 2000. It was housing everywhere you went. People standing outside the bank waiting for new mortgages and flipping houses. Uh, you got, I mean, I you had the uh, Bitcoin. Look at Bitcoin right now. Bitcoin trading at uh, up 910. It was up much much more earlier on. It's made a peak D. Uh, there's your cup and ladle breakout to the upside. You remember back in uh, was it 2021? I came, I said, I've got a peak D in December. I said, I went to a, a New, Year's, New Year's party and everybody there was talking about, everybody was talking about Bitcoin. Everywhere I went, people were telling me about the, their kids are into Bitcoin and their, their parents were into, I mean, it was amazing. And I said, uh-oh, major top. And look how we took it back. And in fact, we had the GBTC at that particular time. So look at that pullback. I don't see anything, maybe one area that is proliferating uh, word of mouth, just everywhere. Not even Bitcoin, it's up, but I don't hear everybody talking about Bitcoin anymore. So I don't see this as a major, major top. I don't, I'll be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Hi folks, so, um, so as I was saying, Bitcoin has done very well, um, it's holding quite nicely, I think it's getting somewhat overbought in a very short term. So let me do this, I want to do this quickly. Dow, INDU. The Dow is trading down 264, uh, it's had four ugly candles, well one wasn't so ugly, but really four candles, to three of them are red, big reds. We'll see if it's the day, day's young, it's options expiration, anything can happen here. But 44,486 was the all time high. The Now, I just want to mention the weekly chart. All the technicals here are very strong. Even the stochastics pull back a little bit, but it's still at 83%. And the monthly chart, same thing. In lettering, we've got a, a, a leg F to the upside in the weekly and a leg E in the monthly. We are ready. That's why I was saying that I was anticipating that there'd be some kind of, um, I always think of it as Bart Simpson hairstyle, spiky up moves that get us to a D somehow or other. It'll take until just before Thanksgiving, and then we've got to be careful in the sense that we could have a, a pretty serious time and price pullback. Uh, that's the one that would be 12, 18 percent, something like that. Uh, that's still within all the parameters I'm looking at so far. Uh, that's what I'm looking at. Let's look at the S and P. The S and P right now is down. Um, it's down 62. I mean that's a lot at 58.86, and it gapped down to that level. So there's an island reversal. That means there was a gap on the left side with prices that are going higher, and then the island that the, the mainland is <laughs> below that gap. But there are actually two gaps. I don't know if we're going to. Someone asked about filling a gap, and I said, I, we can get into this gap. That's the gap there of the six, the low of the six at 58.64.89. I don't think we're filling the gap. Not yet. I think there's an upside to be done later. We might be able to do that. All right. With that said, I want to go to the QQQ. And as I said, I think that this rotational aspect is still rife in the market. So 499.31 down uh, 9.39. That's a pretty hefty island reversal pullback in the QQQ. I've got this only as a leg C in the uh, weekly chart. Let's go to the IWM. Has that increased the selling pressure? Minus 209. Yep, it has. At 229.85, we are long both the Dow and 
bit along the IWM all the way down from 203, taking a little bit off, tried to get it three times long. It wasn't successful. We've done it before it was, and this time it wasn't. Uh, I should not have actually put it on with that peak D. Remember, D is where other things can happen. So this is a little bit different. Leg D in the weekly chart, leg D in the monthly but 244.46 is my target in this particular phase. Could be totally wrong about that. Let's go to the, I also wanted to mention that the XLV, that's really part of it. Now remember, so the XLV is the S&P Healthcare ETF. The XLV had made its high up in the 160 area. It was 159, was it? 159.64, the week of the 6th of September. And then it just came tumbling down. I... I did have this notated and then lost the, uh, the data. I had to redo it. But I had left side, right side price time match making this left side low of the 9th of August, which is uh, in the XLV, the S&P Healthcare ETF, um, 145.54, really important. And we held, look what we did. We went to 145.62. I mean, how that happens, I just don't know. One, 145.54. 145.62, the dreaded H pattern, the H pattern, a successful test. It had a nice rebound. That green nine period moving average now, this week, has gone pink, and we've gone much lower down. We've even taken out the next low of the 5th of July, which is at 142.73, and the next one will be the low of the 31st of, week of the 31st of May, uh, 140.68. So, and remember, yeah, the, the fear for healthcare is that we, we're talking about vaccines. I, I might be wrong, um, but if, if I remember correctly, I thought that uh, Kennedy was talking about the vaccine for COVID having some questions as to the um, transparency. As, and that's what I understand. I mean, I, I actually don't, I have a tough time listening to him. I'm sorry, I just, I, 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 I don't quite understand all the words just because of his, uh, the low range of his voice. So I might have missed something. But um, back at, you know, back at the, ex, the healthcare sector, I don't think he's ever said he's against vaccines. I mean, I might be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. No one, any, I mean, you know that the, for the polio epidemic, they had the wrong mixture, and it created a lot of problems. And then, um, I can't remember his name, he got the right mixture, and they believed in him. And it was incredible. I don't know about you. I grew up with people that had polio. I have a friend who has uh, polio from that period. Um, yeah, so vaccines are absolutely very, very important. So I don't think he's talking about that. I hope not. So the preamble to the healthcare discussion is the chart formation was already taking a tumble, taking a tumble from September. This just added to it with a huge gap down. It's taken out, as I said, the left side. Oh, yes, you, there's your price match. Uh, when we have a sharp pullback and I'm doing the analysis, I very often go to if there's a D and then there's a trough of D. I often use that as my plumb line to, to continue. This one worked. I, I wish I had actually seen it. Um, I completely forgot about it. Look, it's to the day. It's one day early to take out the left side low of um, 142.73 from the 3rd of July. Just I, uh, Actually, I think I had it more on my a IYH, and I don't think I have that anymore because I lost data from the last shutdown. Yeah, that's the same thing. Look, there it is. There's your midpoint right there. Oh, my, it's perfect. Yeah, I think I uh, I had it on the a IYH. That's the one I usually follow more than the XLV. So that's the iShares Healthcare. All right. So with that said, my basic point here is that I think that this is, it's not just an emotional sell-off. It was on its way down. Remember sector rotation? And I said, this is part of this. Uh, a while back, I said, it seems to me that this is part of the um, healthcare problem. But if you look at the I by IBB, the IBB itself, the I IBB is the NASDAQ Biotech and the X... B I. 
is S&P Biotech Spider. Remember, I made a big deal about how they different chart patterns and that the S&P Biotech Spider, even though it's not as good a chart pattern as the IBB, the NASDAQ, was actually doing very nicely up until November, early November. Oh, oh, oh. Is it November? The, yeah, November the 11th. Wow, look at this turn down. So anyway, I think that this is overdone. So there could be a little bit more. I just want you to go to it because I was asked about it. One, one of my subscribers sent me a note intraday yesterday or during my webinar to say that the XLV could be part of why the IWM pulled back because there are a lot of small, small cap healthcare in that area. So I needed to do that. Now, a couple of questions came in. Let me do that. I've got a lot of other things to do. But what I am going to do right now is, Lily, there's e Eli Lily. Um, yeah, that's different. Eli Lily had a 769 round number recently, ran up, and now is taking that out. That's a different kettle of fish. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, Tiger Munitions Hour, Thousand Two Eight. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in a fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully.
Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Hi, folks, we're back and we're looking at Eli Lilly, a question that Dan, yeah, Eli Lilly, uh, the 747s was the low back in, I think it was, uh, was that, yeah, August. And that would be my first target at this particular point is 752, down 33 points, down four per, four and a quarter percent. Um, I had looked at this when it was doing so fantastic because this, you remember I did a webinar on small rectangle, on the long narrow rectangle and the large rectangle. And the large rectangle can have a move to the up back. If it's a sharp move down, then goes up. If it has higher highs and higher lows and makes a peak A and a B, it could actually go all the way to a D just on, just under or just above the previous major high. And then it could start to pull back. That's the one pattern. The other pattern was it runs all the way up in a V-shaped formation and makes a double top. And that becomes the dreaded H without the, without the long side. So it's a big arch formation failure pattern. And that pattern said to me when I was looking at it, that was somewhere in this little cluster formation in the 900s. I was looking at it and said, oh, the 9P moving has just gone pink. It was trying to go green. It couldn't hold it pink. This could be a dreaded H. And I thought, should I get subscribers short? Then a $900 stock, I don't know, maybe puts. And then I thought, even that's too expensive. I just set it, set it aside. Forgot about it. Look at this from the 900s down at 750. And now you, this is the dreaded H pattern. Or I, I can't call it. It's really the arch formation. If it takes out decisively the 440, 740s, um, you have to look at the next low, and the next low is all the way down here. So I think that the healthcare, at least this particular period, it, you can look at the short side rather than the long side. 718 will be the next support. But the other one that I was looking at was uh, Pfizer, PFE, also been around decades and decades and decades and decades. Um, that one had that left side, right side, price time match, actually, if I took it to the trough that I was talking about after a peak right there, it would have been an exact test of the, of the of the arch low. Well, this was once in the 60s, and now it's at 25, gap down this morning. I just be really careful. All I'm saying is that I want you to do this just to say that when a sector becomes out of favor, I don't care what the reason is, and that's why I'm looking at the discussions in the den. I, I'm, I'm skipping everything. I, I see uh, YOY, you've got a very interesting uh, a note there about the Amish, unvaccinated children, unvaccinated, have 92% less illness or chronic ailments, old carries. Uh, I, Amish is not Manhattan. So you've got to, you know, you have to put things in perspective. But I, I, I'm not getting into those discussions for me. This is always about the market. So I'm going right back to the market. And I'm going to say healthcare, looking more at the short side, at some point, I think it gets way overblown. You've got to have healthcare. And we'll see what happens. I mean, we have a healthcare stock. It did fantastically. Went to, went to a peak D after the major. IPO rally to 96, down to uh, 47s. We were very lucky. We got into the 57. We had a really good gain. Then we, we took some off and we wait for the pullback. Then we had a completely separate add-on, and that had really good gains. It went all the way to that high, uh, the 77s. We got out of 76.06 .06 part of it. And then the other yesterday, we got out altogether. Of that position, we still have the core. I'm watching this closely because it's in that area. Solventum Core Healthcare spin off of Triple M. So, okay, now I'm done with that. I want to go back to so wait a minute. The next LMT, LMT is there. We go. This is Lockheed Martin Defense. Wow, dreaded H. Yeah, is the market saying that with Trump? We're not going to have wars anymore. I don't know. I hope, gee, I hope that's true. If that's the only thing that comes out of it. I'll be happy as a clam. Um, but that's the most important thing. Um, warfare, the LMT, what's RTX doing? Raytheon, whoops, typing it over here. Um, and it's so fascinating because we had that big run up based on many things. And we'll see exactly how um, it pans out. Oh, look at that. Oh, EFG. 
Oh, this failed at a peak C. Just recently, I was saying it's so rare. We've seen this now twice. I can't remember what the other thing was. Failing at a peak C at an all-time high, it's very unusual. I could, I, I'll have to look to see. Is there any way that I can recalibrate that? No, I can't because oh, I'll figure it out. There could be an alternate count, but anyway, it was peak C. Failed desperately from the 129 area, 128, and here we are at 117 down to dollar sixty. Okay, so that's Raytheon. Good. Um, oh. Um, wait, did I see something here? Oh, Zip, thank you. A UEC on fire. Wait, wait, wait. UEC on fire? Uh, the, the, the plant is on fire? Or on fire? Let me see. UEC. We have UEC, which is, here we go. UEC is uranium energy core. Wow, what a big move. Up 77 cents at 8.13 million in the sixes. This is the second time we've been in the stock. Uh, oh, that's very nice action. And I said, I didn't know, even last night, I think I said, I don't know yet whether uranium is going to be this big thing going into, I think I said it last night or in, during the day, um, that I will see whether or not this is going to be uranium this year for 2024, closing towards the highs. I don't know yet, but so far this is pretty good action. So what is this story? Oh, Russia restricting ex exports of enriched uranium to U.S. I forgot, you know, we all, we have reciprocity in some areas with Russia, with all the talk and everything. It's amazing what politics can do. All right, so once again, um, you never know. So that's a really good thing. So what I want you to do here is, I needed to finish up. Look, the dollar. The dollar is trading, um, let's see, down three ticks at 106.83. I've still got this in a buy mode. All the technicals are good. Well, they were good for the uh, Dow and the S&P. So in the meantime, this is good and everything's holding. And it's this huge leg A in the, in the weekly chart. I... Technically, I could call it a D, but I'm calling it an A. Um, and the monthly chart has got this cup arch, cup arch formation. Now it's in a cup, and it is trying to tackle the 107, I think 35, what I can't see it. Yeah, 107.35 high of October of last year. And today's high is 106.95. Yesterday's was 107.08. So what's real was 06. Look, that breakout from the Chef Wave Inst. Okay. From. Look at that. You've got a down sloping. Excuse me, I'm going to say. Excuse me. And you've got a breakout. So the dollar is acting really well. The MACD is good. The gas is good. The 9 feet is over the 14. Why? Well. That's very good. We are still long the dollar, but this is really fascinating how it's held up. I'll be back. Dow's down 283. SMU's down 67. Basil Chapman, Tiger 2 questions. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. 
an amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors for traders who crave risk directions daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade and trade through rapidly changing markets these are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading not long-term investing whether you're a bull or a bear you choose the direction for up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction.com. Investing in the fund involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So technical Friday, and let me just say that the uh, so far the dollar is acting really well. The stochastics at 94%. That's really nice action. Look at the EURUSD. It's the exact opposite, and it's plunged below the April low. Um, it's trading at uh, one05 uh, pretty much unchanged, but that is a huge from that two engine P moving average in the uh, daily chart. Look at that rip to the downside, and it's the dreaded H that goes to lowercase m in the uh, weekly chart, in the monthly chart, I'm sorry, and that just makes this low very important to hold the low of 1.04484, and it's trading at 1.05. 301. And now what we're looking at is the USD, JPY, uh, that is moving to the upside. It was moving to the upside today. It's down $1.26 at 155.01. Now, this is different to the to the um, dollar. I've got this as an E, a leg E and a leg A. So it means that I need to do some homework over the weekend because is there even a chance that this is um, a different notation? Well, I really can't say that because that was an instant restart there and we went lower. This has to be a brand new buy, buy mode. So I think the dollar is still looking very good. So that, that covers that. High grade copper was the clue the other day that there could be some damage to the general market because it wasn't participating at all. It's up a fraction today, but it's really had a huge move to the downside, testing the uh, left side low of August, I think it was. August, the week of the 9th of 3.987. And today, uh, uh, yesterday, it went to uh, 4.0015. So it's higher, but it's on the 200 period exponential moving average. It's an important phase right now. I needed to do a couple of things before I go to the VIX. So I needed to go to the bonds, US. So the bonds are down sharply. And we've got a one-to-one -one, uh, measurement, and that takes us, I, I must make it more exact than that. So I'm going to move it up to there. Now, this particular pattern from the Chen Wave Falling Axe Formation, I like when it, um, this is the inverted falling axe, I like when it actually has the same degree of angle, but this one extends a little bit far out. It says by... The, uh, the week of the 27th of December, we should hit 114, uh, 114 and a half. No, I don't think that if it's going to happen, it's going to happen really quickly. So that's really the level to watch. It's this low right here. I don't even need Fibonacci most of the time because we've got troughs and peaks on the left side to uh, monitor it. So 114 and 19.30 seconds. Let's look at it as a TLT. 
TLT is already taken out that left side low. The next one now is the low of uh, 88.68. Um, that's the week of the 31st of May. And today's low is 89.51. Gosh, these moves are so uh, so sharp each time. Okay, with that said, um, in the den, UAL, UAL, UAL is, oh, look at that move up. Didn't I have a United Airlines? Oh, I didn't, I guess. So this is peak A. This is a leg B, surely. No, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, brand new. Can't get an H, so this has to be brand new. A, this is leg B. So this is another reason why I can't be overly bearish. There was a, there was an essence, of, I, I would talk about it as a IYT, as a Dow transportation Dow Industrials, although they're not the industrials anymore, and the transportation is a real mix, but it's transportation anyway. A, a confirmation. Decades ago, when I used to, when I heard, oh, yes, there's a confirmation of, uh, um, with, the, with the Dow Industrials and the Dow um, Transportation Index at all-time highs, I'd say, oh, oh, that's trouble. <laughs> and very often, we'd have a pullback from there. I don't know if that's the case right now, but you did make a PD in the IYT in the daily. You've made a PD in the uh, weekly and a leg E in the monthly. I, I can't ignore this. There are a lot of factors that are really mixed uh, mixed right now. So um, so JETS, -E I've been talking about this all week, actually for a few weeks now, saying, look at this move to the upside. It's one of the... This is the most, one of the most beautiful chart patterns you can see when it walks the nine period moving average um, and doesn't even close below that for weeks and weeks. And that's exactly what we've got here. Look, here's Jets. Now, this is the US Global Jets ETF. And here again, I can't see this as the end of the world right now. This is due to a very big positive. Is it a big positive because crude oil has come down so sharply? Um, maybe. I don't know. But the, the point is, it's acting very well. And it also means people are traveling more. So I have to put that together. Now, the fact that UEC, the uranium, uh, that's moved up more on a story than anything else because it was stalling a little bit. So this is a very important. URNM is a uranium ETF. And that is trading up very nicely today. But it did make a peak D. Remember, D in the Chapman Wave is where you've got to be a little careful. So D in the 53s. Uh, back in October, and it did pull back to the 44s, and here it is at 47. So, yeah, at the last minute, some things can happen. So, yeah, let me just do this. I had a couple of questions I needed to get to. Um, uh, yeah. Yes, but... Um, okay, so in this this particular phase that I call rotational... What we're seeing is you've got strength. Look at this, the XLF. And this is another reason why I couldn't get overly bearish. Yeah, I could see a sharp pullback. This is a sharp pullback. Look, the XLF is holding steady. It's up 17 cents at 49.81. That is the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund. Leg F slash seeing the weekly fabulous action a little overbought. Look at the look at the on balance volume. The unbalanced volume daily has already pulled back a little bit, and yet the price is held steady. And the KRE should be more impacted. And the KRE right now is down 66 cents and made a peak C. Uh, EF, oh, it could be a G slash C, but I'm just saying that it's it's still acted really well. We are long the KRE. It's done very, very nicely. But at the same time, um, it's the regional banks. So that puts us in the category of the small caps, the IWM, basically the small caps, they're really not small, but we're calling the small caps of the regional banking uh, sector. And if you've got yields, TBT, skyrocketing like this, yeah, maybe it's going to impact them. Look at the TNX, because a lot of the um, credit cards, automobile loans, all that is based on the, TL, uh, the TNX, the 10-year and that went to a peak G slash C, which invariably goes to a D in the Chapman Wave methodology. And lo and behold, there it is. There's your D at 44.66, 4.465. So that will have an impact. All right? And um, there it is. Okay. So 10-year T-note. 
um, had a one to one to the downside, held that support, and now it's rallying. So I do think, oh, Toll Brothers, let's see where we are there. Toll Brothers should be down, it's down just a dollar. Well, it's pretty darn well. What, a, what an economy this is. I mean, it's just, a, you know, I've always wondered about it. I remember one of, uh, Economics 101 when I did it after high school. Um, I, I always wondered about how when the market, when the economy is doing well, people get worried. I think you've got to be happy when the economy is doing well, aren't you? I'll be back. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So to sum up, well, first of all, uh, during the uh, Tommy's show, uh, Morning Market Kickoff, really a fabulous show because Tommy puts the fundamentals together with technicals, comes up with fundamental stuff that I, I, I when I have the opportunity, I love hearing because... Uh, it's not my forte just putting the fun, you know, just I listen to things, but I don't always put it together uh, the way he does. It's very really nice. He's mentioned Hertz, and I mentioned Hertz last night. I said, I have these screamers that show up on a, on a screen that I have, um, and Hertz, under $10, Hertz showed up. With a, look at the spectacular move. Hertz Global Holdings trading HTZ, trading down three cents at 408. And it had this spectacular move from the 280 area to uh, $4.10 or something yesterday. I mean, that's a big move percentage wise. And it's holding steady today. Look at the little doji candle, leg B in the weekly chart. I don't know if I, I, 
is this what you put in your portfolio right now in this particular phase of the market? I don't know. But anyway, it was just interesting to see. So let me just sum it up. I, I'm going to grab the VIX index. And as I do that, I believe Steve is out. Um, so my webinar should be up today for subscribers and new subscribers. Um, I'm also going to do a summary of action report. I did so much looking at other areas that today I will do a, a, just a very brief summary of our portfolio. Oh, I call it a portfolio, but our positions. And uh, it's going to be very important. So the VIX index has finally had a big spike to the upside. It's up 15, at 1577 and 1.46. If the VIX continues rallying and closes the day towards the 16s, that's something that I have to take take note of because if Monday we suddenly pop into the 17 or 18 area, that's going to be, I have to respect that for sure. But at this particular point, I'm still looking at this as part of the rotation that some areas are actually still, even today, some areas are holding pretty well. We saw that with the financials um, and uh, some areas are, they, they needed a rest and they're having a rest. So with that said, I'm going to have a bit of a rest here. Have a wonderful uh, rest of the day and a wonderful weekend. Check out my open.